song. And you guys I have had it for like summer, you know. Hmm. Check is on Ferrum, just so you know. <laughs> Grounds. A good yes. morning, yeah. Yes, it is. So tell me, tell me your thoughts about that game. Which one? The one with Nigeria. We'll talk about I don't know. Did you see the one yesterday? Nigeria versus Sudan? Yes. Uh, okay, when I was watching, I, I made note of the second goal and I said I was going to ask you about it because of the protest. Remind me, um, follow me. The goal scorer? The, the, I know the first one was, um, I think it was Chukwe, is it? Yeah, yes. Chukwe, the second one was uh, uh, Awoni. Awoni, okay. Awoni scored the second goal. So, mm. it was a clean goal. It was just, it was just a clean goal. That's just it. I don't know what the protest was all about, but it was a clean goal. Did you see the scoreline, though, coming? 3-1. Well, after what we did against the Egypt. heroes of Egypt, mm. because, you know, a lot of people are not stressing enough the fact that we didn't just, um, we didn't beat Egypt against the run of play. We were yeah, actually yeah. very assertive mm. against the Egyptians. The toughest by all standards, mm. the most successful team in the history of African Cup of Nations, if we could play against them that way, uh, trust me, it was a marker. Mm. Sudan is no match. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we saw it on Saturday. I mean, not to refer to Nigeria as an underdog or anything, but it seems like Under that's what? the story. Um, I'm, I'm coming to the, um, what's it now? Uh, Equatorial Guinea and yeah. um, Algeria. Algeria. Algeria game yesterday. I mean, I was watching that, and it seemed like they started with a fight. From the start, it was harsh, and even till the end. But at the end of the day, Equatorial Guinea... Um, one and the commentator's words struck me because he said that this is like a fairy tale win or fairy tale story. Like nobody going into yeah. that match would have given it to the Equatorial guys to win it. But and and we've we've seen some of that in this tournament, haven't we? Well, you have to look at it in context. Or you have. Uh, Mohamed Salah. They also have a certain player in their ranks. Uh, yeah, he yeah. plays for Manchester City. One of the, I mean, former African player of the year. So, you you would not look at them on paper and say, uh, Ikitura gave me stood any chance. Mm -hmm. But you see, that's, that's a tournament competition for you. Uh, like uh, people will say on the street, nobody has come to play. <laughs> and they showed them mm -hmm yesterday yeah they did absolutely it's getting more and more interesting you know I'll tell you right it. now I, I believe strongly that, that Nigeria will get to the final okay of the African Cup of Nations I think all things being equal I, I, I think I'm, I'm, being, I'm being optimistic right now this is yeah. not me yeah. being yeah. optimistic yeah. this, this is, is me being realistic realistic okay based on okay. what based on what we have seen at the tournament okay. Nigeria has been the best team yeah I agree alongside the no Cameroon. sentiments no, no sentiments. sentiments. No yeah. sentiments. I wouldn't have said that before the beginning of the AFCON. But with what they've shown so far, trust mm -hmm. me, I think I totally agree with it. I mean, you guys are the experts, but I'm going to be cautiously optimistic. <laughs> We're not the <laughs> 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 I'm waiting for my heart to be broken. You know, so I'm no going worries. to watch from a distance and keep my fingers crossed. But I mean, you guys certainly know. The guys got you covered. Okay. Don't yeah. worry, you'll not be out broken yes. after okay. this. Thank you so much, uh, Charity, <laughs> this morning. Yes. Uh, you know, that's our way started every Monday uh, to dive straight into the world of sports on the Integrity Station, Splash 105.5 FM Ibadan, broadcasting from the White House building, Felele in the city of Ibadan. Good morning to you. Today is 17th January 2022. Uh, sports Bank is live this beautiful Monday morning. And we're excited to be with you from the Nigerian Professional Football League to the African Cup of Nations uh, to the Australian Open, where eventually uh, <laughs> Novak Djokovic had to be sent packing, yeah. you know, from Australia. Uh, you know, I think he went on route to Dubai. European football also getting some of our attention as well. You're in for a beautiful time uh, on Sports Bank this morning. My name is Tunde Olawo. Ferran Adigwe guys here, and we'll be doing this together from now till 8 o'clock. So be part of what we are doing. We're streaming live on our Facebook fan page. Just search Splash 105.5 FM Ibadan. Splash 105.5 FM 
Ibado and let's do this together. Fermi. Yeah, good morning. Good morning to you today. Good morning to the city of Ibadan. Always good to be here again to talk sports. I mean, uh, it's a uh, it was a weekend full of amazing activities in the world of sports, and I can tell you that a bumper package edition uh, this wonderful morning on Sport Bank. I mean, like you rightly said, Australia Open getting our attention, the African Cup of Nations. I mean, against all odds, uh, I, I didn't see that coming. A team, a, a, a team ranked 114 in the world against 28 in Africa, and of course, at the end of the day, uh, they actually got. Uh, 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 the win at the end of the day, talking about Equatorial Guinea, we would have thought, I was talking to someone before the beginning of the tournament, that I see an upset coming in a group, but I don't know where. I never thought it was going to be a group involving the defending champion, and it's looking like, you know, all things being equal now, they have, you know, a lot of work to do to make sure they qualify to the next round, because if they do pick a draw in the next, in the next game, they're definitely out of that competition. So, I mean, Afcon serving us with a lot of entertaining activities, a lot of, you know, interesting results right there. And talking about Syria alone, I mean, that group have been so, so amazing. We would have thought again, at the depth of the minute, they got an equalizing goal that made them have a, a, another point in that one. Seriously, I mean, it's really, really getting interesting right there, Afcon. Uh, I expected, I didn't expect this much excitement, but trust me, the seven needs lot with a massive entertaining and, of course, has some, you know, a quality football gradually, you know, showing case at this particular point in time in Afcon. You know, the last few days have been serving us with so many interesting things. Yeah. Yesterday, uh, Everton also fired their manager, Rafael Benitez. <laughs> we'll visit that later. But now, let's go back to Saturday. Uh, even though some will say it's old news, but with Nigeria, it never gets old. Nigeria cruised to a 3-1 victory over Sudan at the African Cup of Nations to book their spot. And the last 16, Samuel Chukweze set the ball rolling for the Super Eagles in the third minute from a Moses Simon pullback. Nigeria doubled their lead on the stroke of half time when the ball went in off Taiwa Wuni and Simon rolled in a third straight after the race starts. Uh, Waladin Kedel pulled a goal back for Sudan from the penalty spot after Olaino was penalized for a challenge. The Nigerian right back was a judge to have fouled. Uh, Secretary Belt's uh, defender, uh, Mustafa Kashim, pulling his shirt as the corner was swung in following a video assistant uh, referee review. Nigeria had won their group D up now against Egypt 1-0 and the result against a side ranked 125th in the world was never in doubt. Out of area forward, Chukwu is slotted into the bottom left hand corner from the center of the box. Meanwhile, the Pharaohs of Egypt, that same day they were also able to redeem themselves, you know, by beating Guinea Bissau yeah. uh, one nil. Basically, what they're saying is that look, Nigeria. We are following bumper to bumper Definitely. out of this group. I think that's just what I expect of them. I mean, if they are ever going to qualify from that group, they needed to win that game, and they actually did. I mean, it, it took them time, uh, but they were able to actually come out tops. And, you know, courtesy of that man himself, talking about Mohamed Salah, uh, they say when, it's, when, when the push, you know, gets very tough. Uh, the talented one, the quality would definitely come out, and he actually came out on that particular day. I mean, uh, that does not mean that, you know, Everything is still working well for them. I still feel they have a lot of work to do uh, in that particular team if they will actually go for uh, in this AFCON. But so far, so good. They've been able to actually redeem themselves. Hopefully, they can complete it in their next game. But talking about Nigeria, I think we saw another, you know, wonderful performance from those guys. Uh, they keep giving us that, you know, massive teamwork that we've actually been longing for for a very long time. They, they actually showed us that, you know, defeating the Egyptians was definitely not a fluke. And of course, we are not underrating any of our opponents. That was what we saw against the Sudanese. They came out at tops, they dominated again, the team play, the style of play was intact, the philosophy was actually there. I mean, again, a team that knew what was, you know, what they were actually going to do in that game. So I, I think, you know, it's really getting amazing. They need to keep up this work, especially the team work, the consistency has to be there. Though some couple of players need to actually improve themselves. I mean, despite the fact that Stawa only actually got the goal, I still feel he needs to impose himself more, you know, uh, uh, right there up front for the Super Eagles of Nigeria is like a point man, is like the main man for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. So, majority of all the final balls would actually be coming to you, and you need to actually continue to deliver. And talking about Moses Simon, I mean, the man cannot just stop impressing a lot of Nigerians at this point in time. He keeps doing a lot of work for us, and I think, I hope he continues with that. Once again, I think he needs to work on his delivery. I mean, it's just like, okay, I do whatever I do, and, you know, the delivery doesn't concern me, but I think it's very, very important that you actually work on your delivery, because, you know, that's like the final product of 
everything you've been able to do so far on the field of play. You got a goal, but then, you know, we still need to talk about that particular one. And, of course, uh, hopefully, our uh, Australian government can be able to actually to time to work more on that particular one. Talking about our defense, talking about midfield, I mean, I saw a much more compact defense, you know, against the Sudanese on Saturday. You, you, you look at Omero, and I tell you, trust me, that partnership is really working. Talking about Omero and, of course, our, our trust Ekong. It's more like, you know, these guys are actually complementing each other. And it's, and it's a good one for the Super Eagles on Nigeria. I just hope they can actually continue with that. I mean, they're having a tough test against Equatorial Guinea. And I think, you know, it's going to be a tough one. Why? I mean, Guinea-Bissau, rather. Uh, why? Because these guys are, uh, they, they are a physical team. I, I saw them against the Egyptians, and I tell you that they've got a strength, they've got a physicality, and they've got a height. I mean, that is one area that, you know, uh, Super Eagles have to actually be very careful because set pieces, they've not really been impressing talking about the Super Eagles of Nigeria when it comes to, you know, uh, converting their set pieces. And, you know, if you are going to get all the needed results against these guys, you must, you know, uh, try and avoid, you know, uh, uh, getting at them on their strengths, talking about the height and all that. So I think, you know, uh, if they can actually work on this, I would say we can finish the group uh, with nine points. Though I expect, you know, other players to come into fold, those that have not been given the chance, uh, the, the uh, area crews of this world to actually come in in the next game and see what they would actually be able to bring to the table. But, you know, all in all, first time in a long time, maybe not first time in a long time, but at least right now, we have qualified to the next round with a game to spare. Amazing one from us today, Gwevon. Okay, the guys from Guinea-Bissau, known as the White Dogs of Guinea-Bissau, will be playing them uh, this uh, Wednesday. Uh, same venue. Yeah. So uh, it's a, a very familiar one. But yes, we can talk about all the positives from this Super Eagles team. But some people are still concerned about uh, the goalkeeper, uh, Maduka Okoye. Sometimes <laughs> his control of his uh, space, space yeah. is a bit um, questionable. Mm. Do you think that, you know, in the latter stages of the competition, when we were playing, you know, hopefully, you know, teams like um, Senegal, if they get to go through the own yeah. team, Cameroon, Cameroon yeah. and all of that, this may come down to become an issue? Ah, I, I think maybe to some extent, because uh, if you see uh, Madoka Okoye, you would see that... Uh, he is not that composed as a goalkeeper and that is one thing a goalkeeper should actually have i mean that composure has to be there you have to control your half i mean your ground and it's very very important we've not really oh, seen much of that doesn't get to see many balls you know i think yeah. so to the extent that unlike what we saw with the Sierra keeper mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> he doesn't get to make too many saves so I, that I, I get but but the little you know? time you are actually being called into action you've shown that you're a bishiki which means that if a better team, if a much more, you know, attacking side comes playing against the Super Eagles of Nigeria, you might actually lost your ground. Well, I, I think it's just a, a general thing, the goalkeeping department. For me, as far as I'm concerned, I still feel that we've not really had that number one that we can actually trust since the days of Vicente Yama, as far as I'm concerned. So I, I think, you know, we just have to uh, make the available preferable at this particular point in time and just try as much as possible to cover him as much as we can. But I think, you know, all in all, if you can continue with this kind of form, with this kind of composure, uh, there can still be lots to do to cover his mistakes on the long run. Uh, Coach Austin Ogovon has already hinted that in our last group game that we are most likely to make use of some of um, you know, the players we've not seen so far. So far, yeah. I mean, do you think that's the way to go? Yeah, th I, I think so, absolutely. I, I, we, we've seen that, you know, uh, at first level, first choice, have, have actually been so convincing. They've shown us what they can actually do. And, of course, uh, we need to see more. I mean, if these guys get injured, if probably, you know... Uh, uh, Anyone you, you really you are looking forward to... Uh, I, I said it earlier. I think I want to see Henry Yukro. I want to see what this man can actually do, you know, on the field of play. I want to see his impact right there going forward. I think, you know, he has not really been given that much chance in the field. Of, and, of course, uh, 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 you know, uh, Sadio Kumar, too. I mean, he was given little time, but I feel, you know, he's not been uh, able to keep much into that particular game. So, I think I want to see those two. I want to see what they'll be able to do if everything goes tough, if probably injury sets in, if, uh, you know, uh, uh, yellow cards come in and some players, key players get suspended. How do these guys come in key into the system of Arsenal Gov? I think this is the best time to actually test these guys because whether we like it or not it's a team work and of course these guys are also part of the team and we need them. We need good bench as much as first 11. Okay, keep your comments coming on our Facebook fan page. Uh, good morning, Prince Olale Kunle Omole saying good morning. I've said before that football is a monster. Uh, Gerald Down 
Egypt out to mm. rob their opponent for three points. It's still loading. Afcon is interesting. Uh, Joshua Appiah, Joshua Appa. Uh, Sadiq Kumar needs to up his play. The coach should try other strikers. Uh, salvation, Joshua. Uh, good morning, guys. Today, I think 3SC needs a finisher and good midfield. <laughs> Super Eagles win the Super Eagles win the Group D with nine points. Okay, Super Eagles they win, win Group D, D with, with nine, nine points. points. Yeah. Okay, you already uh, counted another victory for them uh, against Guinea Bissau in the game that is set to happen on Wednesday. Uh, Ayodele Abimbola, Bamidele, thank you for your comments. Uh, Abu Kassim, the referee should be blamed, not Egypt. You saw what happened between Mali and uh, Tunisia. Non-stop action in the African Cup of Nations. Equatorial Guinea stunned Algeria to leave the defending champions on the brink of a group stage exit from the African Cup of Nations in Cameroon. Esteban Obiang Sladen at the far post to convert a flick on another only goal with 20 minutes left in Douala, and of course, the Algerians had no answer. We had three other games played. Mali and Gambia ended 1-0. Ivory Coast and Sierra Leone was 2-2. Uh, uh, Tunisia comprehensively defeated Mauritania 4-0. Uh, Some would argue that that's what you get, you know, with this expanded African Cup of Nations. Yeah, definitely. That Mauritania had no business in AFCON, but hey, they'll be happy that they're out there. Yeah, definitely. And come to think of it, looking at this expansion, I mean, those so-called underdogs have not really been that disappointing, I must say. I mean, Comoros, they've not lost probably more than a, a goal to nil in their games that they've played so far. I mean, this is like the highest we've seen so far in this tournament for goals to nil. So I think, you know, it's it's good that these guys are getting their chance. So you think to think I, I think to some extent it is. Okay, we'll move on. Let's uh, quickly come back home to uh, the Nigerian Professional Football League, where all the teams were in action, starting with uh, Aqua United against Katina United on Saturday. They won 2-0. That's for Aqua United, the defending champions. And, of course, yesterday, uh, Gombe United and Aimba played out a goalless draw. So it was one point picked away from home for Aimba. Uh, Canopilas also defeated Niger Tenedos 1-0. Rivers United were three new winners against Quara United FC. Uh, Rangers uh, won against MFM FC. Abia Warriors 1-0 against Atland. Uh, Wiki Tourists were defeated away from home. 2-1 by Remo Stars. Remo Stars. You know, there's a reason Remo <laughs> are topping I'm telling uh, you, the table. Seriously. They look like uh, the most, not like, they are the most informed team yep. in the league right yeah. now. Uh, Plato United, 5-0, the one against Jakarta FC. Nassau United, 2-1, they defeated Lobby Stars. And in Ibadan right here, it was a 2-2 draw in the derby between Shooting Stars and and Sunshine, make no mistake about it. It was a bad result for shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree with you. And it, it looks like uh, Sunshine Stars, they knew what they wanted to get. I, was, I, I wasn't I was in the studio on Saturday, but I was actually listening to the interview of, you know, uh, uh, the media the officer. officer. And, it, and it was so emphatic about the fact that, you know, look, we are here to actually pick something. The worst we can get uh, at the end of the game is definitely a point. And at the end of it, we actually saw, I mean, shooting Stars even had to come back from behind to get a point in that one. I mean, uh, it's, it's not something very, very encouraging. It's not something uh, very, very good, especially for the boardroom staff at this particular point in time. As soon as that's courtesy of that result at this point in time, they're rooted 17. 17. I mean, six with just six points. From uh, six games. We just, I mean, that's, a, let's say, an average of one point per game. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's not a very good one. But hey, some will still say it's early days. There's just six games played out of... Early days. Yeah, yeah. The well, stars have got 14 points from six games. Yeah, I, I understand, and they've been unbeaten so far this season. They got to a win wins at this point. So it's, it's important to pick points early. Exactly, and those points that Red Monsters are actually picking will still help them when the tough gets going. I mean, when the dark days come, because trust me, they will not have it rosy continuously till the end of the season. I mean, those times will definitely come. Those are the points that would actually keep them uh, uh, on top uh, right there. So I think, you know, it's all good that you're actually gathering the point at this particular point in time, and I feel that is where Edita Goya and the boys should start working on. I mean, you can't 
drop points at home, especially. It's very, very important. I mean, it's like two games now they've actually dropped points at home against the Fennel champion. They played out one more draw and now against Sunshine Stars 2-2. I mean, it's not a very good one, but I still feel, you know, something can be done about it. Work can still be done about it and, of course, they can pick themselves up. Okay, we will take a break for the BBC Premier League update, but it's important to know this. Uh, Japan's Naomi Osaka opened at the friends of the Australian Open title with a dominant win over Colombia's Camila Osorio on day one in Melbourne. Osaka was also, also champion in 2019, raced into a 5-0 lead in the first set before world number 50, Osorio fought back. However, Osaka quickly reasserted her control and wrapped up a 6-3-6-3 a win. This is one Australian Open that you are not going to have, Novak Djokovic, where he's been, you know, successful nine times at won it before, but simply because he cannot stick to the rules uh, about uh, COVID, about vaccination, and uh, you know, other factors. He's been deported uh, from Australia. You know, such a um, break the law. Maybe you should look for another country. I'm not going to mention that country. <laughs> but some of this well, one... Can you mention the continent? Please. Let me see Premier League updates. BBC Premier League updates. From the home of Premier League football. Hello, I'm Paul Serres of the BBC Sports Centre. Rafael Benitez has been sacked as manager of Premier League site Everton for less than seven months in charge. Everton appointed the former Liverpool manager in June. Saturday's 2-1 defeat to Norwich City means the club have won only one of their last 13 league games and sit 16th in the table, six points above the relegation places. The club say an update on a permanent replacement will be made in due course. On the pitch, Liverpool are up to second in the table after beating Brentford 3-0 at Anfield with goals from Fabinho, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain and Takumi Minamino. It was the first time since May 2017 that Liverpool had lined up without either Mohamed Salah or Sadio Mane for a Premier League match. Both are away at the Africa Cup of Nations. Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp was delighted that Oxlade-Chamberlain performed so well in their place. What a wonderful goal, how he took the position today, didn't play it now I don't know if he ever played it for us at least, and did really, really well. Use his speed, and then here, the, the nice head. Trick to fire Leeds United to a 3-2 win at West Ham. Leeds are up to 15th, nine points outside the relegation zone. A memorable day for the match winner, Harrison. Yeah, it's an amazing feeling. I'm just really happy to have helped, to help the team out today in a, a really tough match. Different sorts of goals, weren't they? Accomplished finish, and then the little... The little poacher's goal in between the second one, he mm -hmm. came and ghosted him from behind. Yeah, yeah, we, we've been working on that um, in set pieces. It's uh, a role that I have to fulfil and uh, yeah, yeah, fortunately for, for us today, it went in. Now for more football news from the BBC, go to bbc.com forward slash football. BBC Premier League updates from the Okay, welcome back on Sports Bank. Samuel Fermikuti, good morning to you. Adele Abimbola Bamidele, thank you for enjoying us. And um, Abu Kasim with the sacking of Rafa Benitez is not a surprise to me. Okay, uh, you know, let's see how that uh, pans out. Serie A leaders Inter Milan saw their eight match winning run come to an end as they were held to a goalless draw uh, by Atalanta. Uh, Ellis Verona defeated Sassuolo 4-2. It was 1-0 between Venezia and Empoli. And of course, Roma narrowly won 1-0 against Cagliari. Definitely, we have to leave. I mean, Rafa Benitez, he, he actually, uh, uh, he saw this coming, I must say, to some extent. I mean, I mean, the question is who's going to be next now? We've seen uh, likes of Barry Frank Lampard being leaked to the job. I mean, uh, that could be, I mean, that could be another opportunity for him. Or maybe a win Rooney. What do you think? Well, when Rooney is doing wonders at um, Derby County. I mean, he's doing absolute uh, wonders, but hey, taking this job, just like shooting, 19 points from 19 <laughs> games, that's what it is for Everton. I mean, we to see how that pans out. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Today. Thanks to Ezra this morning. Yeah. They escaped. They escaped. You know, by that postponement. <laughs> that time is still come. <laughs> hey, please, don't, don't be a predictor of doom, please. Uh, I'll call it okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks to you all for listening. Do have a wonderful, wonderful Monday. Don't forget, second half of Sports Bank will be right here at 6.30 later this evening. I am Tunde Olawu. Have a great Monday and bye-bye.
and body are as important and priceless and both deserve to get right attention. As we approach the Amatan season, one prominent environmental feature is the extreme weather within a day. The heat is the daytime and the cool breeze in the nighttime. It is so inconvenient to experience. It is every day during Amatan season. Nonetheless, the festive period has come, guys. It is time to meet our family and friends, to spend time, and to enjoy the moment.